This is Professor Russell James coming to you from Texas Tech University. Welcome to today's lecture from Visual Plan Giving, an introduction to the law and taxation of charitable gift planning. This is Professor Russell James at Texas Tech University. Welcome to Charitable Remainder Trust Part 2, Tax Benefits. An initial and obvious benefit from using a charitable remainder trust is that the donor receives an immediate income tax deduction for a transfer that will not go to charity for many years. Without using a charitable remainder trust, the donor could still set aside an asset, take payments from the investment for 20 years, and donate whatever is left to the charity. But the donor would have to wait 20 years before receiving a charitable income tax deduction. Even worse, if the donor wanted to take payments from the investment for life, donating whatever remained to charity at death, then the donor would never receive any charitable income tax deduction. The Charitable Remainder Trust allows a donor to immediately take a tax deduction in both of these scenarios, even though the ultimate charitable beneficiary may not see the funds for many years. This ability to create a large charitable income tax deduction where none would have existed before, or in some cases to pull forward those deductions by two decades, is very powerful. Additionally, as discussed later, the valuation of the deduction for postmortem transfers is actually much higher than is actuarially appropriate given that wealthy donors on average live much longer than the typical person. Results from the Health and Retirement Study reported in American Charitable Bequest Demographics indicate that wealthy bequest donors live five to seven years longer than poor non-donors do. Additionally, those who purchase lifetime annuities live longer than others of their age because the annuity purchasing group typically excludes those who are seriously ill or known to be approaching death. Both of these factors point to the reality that charitable remainder trust donors will, on average, live substantially longer than others of their same age. For tax deduction valuation purposes, this means donors will receive a deduction based upon their receiving payments for a much smaller number of years than will typically be the case. In other words, the tax deduction is greater than actuarially appropriate. Regardless of the actuarial discussion, there is no doubt that the income tax deduction available for making a post-mortem charitable transfer by a charitable remainder trust is greater than that for making the same transfer by will. This is obvious because a charitable transfer by will generates no charitable income tax deduction. The charitable remainder trust donor does give up some freedom in exchange for the tax deduction. He cannot later decide to give the charity share to a non-charitable beneficiary. In contrast, a will, although generating no charitable income tax deduction, can completely change at any time prior to death. One of the great sources of tax advantages available from a charitable remainder trust relates to the postponement or avoidance of capital gains taxes. Critical to this advantage is the reality that donors may transfer highly appreciated assets to a charitable remainder trust without triggering recognition of capital gain. This is simply another application of the general principle that donors can give highly appreciated property to a charity, recognize no capital gain, and in many cases take a tax deduction based upon the full fair market value of the property. This fundamental tax benefit is why donors normally should give appreciated property rather than cash, especially where the appreciated property is a fungible asset such as a publicly traded stock where replacements can be immediately repurchased with a higher cost basis. The Charitable Remainder Trust takes this basic advantage and applies it to a scenario where the donor not only makes a gift, but receives a stream of payments from the gift. The capital gains tax advantage from a charitable remainder trust is not limited to the ability to transfer appreciated assets into the trust without generating capital gain. The charitable remainder trust is itself a nonprofit entity. As such, the trust 
can have capital gains and earn income while paying no taxes. This creates two dramatic tax advantages. First, the donor can take payments from the full sale value of the highly appreciated asset undiminished by capital gains taxes, whereas a sale outside of the charitable remainder trust would immediately cut the remaining amount available to invest. Second, all future investment growth taking place inside the charitable remainder trust occurs without taxation, accepting only potential taxation on payments received by the donor. This makes the trust a perfect environment for the tax-free growth of assets, similar to a qualified retirement plan. Without looking at the numbers in a few scenarios, it may not be immediately obvious why the ability to receive payments from the full sale amount of a highly appreciated asset can make such an enormous difference. So let's turn to some examples to demonstrate this power. We begin with a common financial planning dilemma. A client holds a low basis, highly appreciated asset. Unfortunately, this asset generates little income. It is often the case that such an asset may be a substantial part of the client's wealth. Wealth is often built in the form of entrepreneurial and business building activity. A client owning such a business may have a very valuable asset, but one which is difficult to convert into a reliable investment income stream. This may be true because the business is in a growth phase where it is important to reinvest earnings rather than pay out dividends. Or this may be true because getting the business to reliably generate income requires the active participation of an owner who wishes to retire. Such entrepreneurial businesses have often been built over a long period of years such that the founder has little or no cost basis in the business. Although business building is perhaps the most common scenario, there are others that can leave clients with low basis assets that produce little or no income, such as owning farmland that has become developable land due to exurban growth or highly appreciated artwork or collectibles or investment property that has been fully depreciated out and is valuable for redevelopment purposes but generates little current income. The natural reaction of most financial advisors seeing clients with income needs whose wealth is highly concentrated in such non-income producing assets is to convert them to diversified income generating investments. But conversions require a sale and a sale creates capital gains tax liability. Such a sale can leave the client with much less wealth. Suppose a client has a million dollar asset with zero basis. We will use a zero basis scenario to show the most extreme case, but this is certainly not outside the realm of possibility. For example, a zero basis asset may be a business built up by the owner over many years without significant upfront cash investment a completely depreciated asset, or perhaps collectibles acquired or received as a gift where there is no documented purchase price. Although the owner wishes to convert this non-income producing asset into a diversified income producing portfolio, that conversion process requires a sale. The capital gains taxes resulting from that sale significantly reduce the remaining assets available for investment. Thus, the usually good advice of diversifying investments and matching income needs with income production of investments is thwarted by the tax cost of selling the low basis asset. This can keep the owner tied to undesirable investments because any sale would result in the loss of nearly a quarter of the value of the asset just from the federal capital gains taxes alone. These federal taxes include the capital gains tax with a top rate of 20% and the 3.8% Affordable Care Act surtax. Of course, most owners live in states that also impose a state level capital gains tax. Currently, 42 of 50 states impose capital gains taxes. Although state capital gains taxes may be deducted from the federal tax return, somewhat softening the impact, 
the addition of state capital gains taxes can make the prospect of a sale even more disheartening for owners. As an example, owners at the top tax rates in California will face, even with full federal deduction, a blended rate of 33.935%. For the unfortunate owner who cannot take full advantage of the Schedule A deduction for state taxes, this rate could increase to as much as 36.8%. When capital gains taxes are taking more than a third of the value of any gain, the option of selling even an underperforming highly appreciated asset can become unfeasible. Beyond this, some assets are subject to even higher capital gains tax rates. For example, capital gain from the sale of collectibles, such as artwork, has a top federal tax rate of 28% in addition to the 3.8% Affordable Care Act surtax rising to 31.8%. Combining this with a 13% state tax in a state like California, if deductible, increases that top rate to 40.87% or even 44.8% if the Schedule A deduction for state taxes could not, for some reason, be used by the taxpayer. Perhaps the worst capital gains tax result comes from selling a short-term capital gain. A short-term capital gain results from the sale of an asset held for one year or less. This is taxed as ordinary income, resulting in a top tax rate of 39.6%, combined with the state income tax rate. For a taxpayer in California, this results in a top combined rate of 50.928%, assuming the ability to use the Schedule A deduction, or 52.6% otherwise. Although the prospect of losing more than half of the value of the asset due to a sale may be rare, it shows the potentially dramatic impact of capital gains taxes. In this particular example, because the underlying asset is short-term capital gain, any charitable gift would be valued based upon the lower of basis or fair market value. Thus, a zero-basis short-term capital gain asset would generate no deductible charitable gift. However, the ability to avoid losing more than half of the asset to taxation may be sufficiently attractive even without the addition of a charitable income tax deduction. The Charitable Remainder Trust provides an alternate path for an owner to be able to sell and earn payments from the highly appreciated asset. Critically, this path results in no reduction of the investment asset due to its sale. The ability to convert the asset into a diversified, income-producing portfolio while leaving the full value of the asset completely undiminished by capital gains taxes is potentially quite attractive. Whether capital gains taxes would cause the owner to lose a quarter, a third, or more than half of the value of his or her assets, avoiding this reduction can result in a much higher level of investment income. The Charitable Remainder Trust offers the attractive option of being able to sell and reinvest a highly appreciated asset with no reduction by capital gains taxes. At a minimum, these capital gains taxes will be deferred to future years, often spreading across the lifetime of one or more recipients. However, in many cases, the capital gains taxes are, simply, uh, are not simply deferred, but are completely avoided. Thus, the use of the Charitable Remainder Trust can produce a much higher level of income than would be otherwise available to the owner of a highly appreciated non-income producing asset. The advantages to using a charitable remainder trust include receiving an immediate income tax deduction, avoiding capital gains taxes on the transfer or sale of underlying assets, and the enjoyment of lifetime payments based on the full value of the investment asset undiminished by initial capital gains taxes. These advantages do come with one primary cost. That cost is the requirement that any remainder amount is transferred to a charity. For a donor who already had the intention of leaving assets to charity at death, this result is perfectly appropriate. 
However, some donors may be particularly concerned about their surviving family members losing the ability to inherit the remainder interest. This might be addressed by giving heirs a lifetime payment stream from the Charitable Remainder Trust. Aside from this, there is another option that will provide the heirs with a lump sum inheritance to replace some or all of the assets they will no longer be inheriting. It is common to combine a charitable remainder trust with an irrevocable life insurance trust as a means to replace the inheritance of the wealth being donated to charity. The use of the irrevocable life insurance trust is a method to make the life insurance death benefit pass to the heirs with no estate taxes. In this way, the heirs may lose the rights to inherit an asset which would have been subject to estate taxes, but in replacement, they receive a tax-free life insurance benefit. Consequently, even a smaller life insurance benefit may be more attractive to the heirs because it passes tax-free from estate taxes. The Charitable Remainder Trust transaction conveniently generates two potential sources to pay for the purchase of life insurance. First, the Charitable Remainder Trust creates an immediate income tax deduction. This allows the donor to take the value of this deduction, in other words, the taxes the donor would have had to pay but for the deduction, and use it to purchase life insurance. Additionally, the Charitable Remainder Trust creates a regular income stream, part of which can be dedicated by the recipient to pay for the purchase of life insurance. This method also allows the donor to transfer a much larger asset to charity, but then use proceeds from the Charitable Remainder Trust to satisfy the needs of heirs through wealth replacement by life insurance. Thus, even the primary disadvantage of charitable remainder trust to the heirs can be softened or eliminated through the use of a combined charitable remainder trust, irrevocable life insurance trust, sometimes called a CRT islet. This has been Charitable Remainder Trust Part 2, Tax Benefits by Professor Russell James at Texas Tech University. Next up is Charitable Remainder Trust Part 3, Calculating Deductions.